Hi, this is Jim from Nowhere's RV. Today we're going to go to Fort Vancouver. I'm going to try my hand at making a cover for our vent. And then we're going to Mount St. Helens. So stay tuned. So we're looking for we're going to head to Fort Vancouver this morning. Um, it's a National Historic Park, right? It's a site. And it is actually on the old Pearson Army Air Corps base. And the Army Air Corps was what was the predecessor to the United States Air Force. So there's barracks, there's the parade field, um, there's the old Athey's building. And they're, they're, you know, the old fort is still here, but it's an old historic fort. Looks like they took the area of the land and made it into an airfield um, sometime later. Yeah. So it's, it probably preserved it more than anything, you know. Yeah, preserved, preserved the area. At least the area. But uh, there's actually even APs, which anybody in the uh, Air Force or Army knows that's some kind of a modern thing. There's uh, it's basically a grocery store. Yeah, basically like a grocery, grocery store. store. Well, or shop a shop at. It's yeah. called a shop at. So like a Seven uh, Eleven. Anyway, we're still learning about this area as we go. But there's also a, a museum for the Pearson um, Army Air Corps base. Yeah. I believe it's closed due to COVID, but normally you can go and visit it too. So there's two things in one site. So why do they call this the uh, in Indian Trade Shop? Oh, this this room specifically is why. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Yeah, this looks. Oh, makes sense. Yeah, so it makes sense now. Native, uh, families to come and trade the pups for all the items over here. Sure. Okay. okay. So um, we were looking over there, like all the medicines and things like that. Yeah, it's and, weird. They call the whole building <laughs> yeah, trade shop. Yeah. 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 No. Okay. But this. this is, yeah. This, this looks like. Oh, this is really cool. You've been to Old Ben's Fort. I have not. Where's that at? In, uh, I think it's in the very lower part of Wyoming. Oh, okay. It, it looks like this. Yeah. You know, it's it's an it's old fort. It's between Colorado and Wyoming. I can't oh, okay. remember which state it's in, but I think it's in Wyoming. But yours it actually has things on the, you know, I mean, they only had a few things. Old Ben's Fort only had just a few things, you but know. it was the most re realistic fort that we've been in. But this, been this looks one. cool, yeah. Yeah, they this, try to yeah. represent what it would have looked like. Uh-huh. Uh, Dr. Barclay, the physician's quarters, he would have worked here as a clerk also, so he was getting two different salaries. Um, and uh, basically one family at a time would come in, they close the door, and then it'd be a private uh, barter between the, oh, okay. the family and the physician uh, slash clerk. Uh, but the natives loved all the modern technology that the British were bringing, all the fancy, nice, shiny beads, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so they, were, they loved this place. Um, they were frequently trading here. Uh, trying to improve their life. That's yeah, good. this is neat. Hmm. Very neat. Thank you for opening it up. Yeah, oh, thank fun. you. Yeah, <laughs> right time. We were sitting outside reading this. We're like, why is it called the trade? Yeah, we should yeah. have more buildings open. Our volunteers tend to come in, you know, around 10 o'clock, you know, yeah. and we're just starting to get volunteers back at this point. So yeah, we are we're starting to get back to normal. And these blankets are basically out of wool, right? Right. Yeah. And didn't Hudson Bay have their own, like, design? Within they have their own. Uh, like a color scheme. Yeah. Uh, really popular. These are the like, most popular. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. But, okay. That's. Yeah, this is neat. <laughs> but they did just offer, you know, far distant European items or, you know, they offered any item with demand. So they offered uh, Native American uh, woven baskets, the moccasins, and the bed pads were all made by local natives. They had a demand, they're of great quality, so the British offered them here. Oh, okay. So they yeah. didn't discriminate. Yes. Yeah. They just ran it as a business. Wherever it would bring the most pelts in, they would offer the items here to entice people to bring the pelts. Uh, this pelt here is amazing because it's all that soft gold. So that wow. is um, when all the long guard hair is plucked off. This is what's underneath the beaver pelt. And that is what they turn into the felted hats. 
Oh, okay. This this material right here, this this is a soft gold. This is what they yeah. wanted. It is soft too. It is really soft. Yeah, at Old Bensport, they talked about how the unruly Indians, they weren't allowed to come in the, the building, <laughs> but they could trade outside the fort, you know. And then they, oh, yeah. and then they yeah. had the ruly, the ones that were friendly, they were allowed, they were allowed to come in, yeah. <laughs> I believe they had a policy of like not trading firearms and then alcohol. Yeah. There was two things they didn't trade, either trappers or natives, yeah. so I think they'll learn their lesson there. Right. Yeah, but right. it was just weird because that... The Ben's old Ben's fort, they actually had a segregated area where the ones that were friendly were allowed to come in. Oh, okay. And then the ones that weren't as friendly, they could still trade, but they had to trade outside. Outside. They were not allowed yeah, to see the things that were on the shelves, you know. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just funny. You know. I mean, just thought it was funny. But. They did have a European settler shop uh, on the other end of the fort, and that was for the European settlers to come in and trade. It would have been similar to this, but this is for the native, uh, local natives, and that would have been for the Europeans. So they did yeah. segregate they in did that segregate way. They did segregate that way. Yeah. What's in the pouches of the eight pound uh, bundles of twist tobacco? Oh, that's tobacco. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know why they bundled it like that. Maybe you got rolled huh. some canvas. That's with. interesting. Uh, but twist tobacco is ideal because you could chew it or smoke it. Uh, this is uh, that's twist it there from Brazil. Wow. So they had over twenty different kinds of tobacco they offered here. Um, twist tobacco. And they grew tobacco here, but they were also getting the best tobacco in the world, which is Brazil tobacco at the time. Yeah, North Carolina. We're, we're my family in North Carolina, and I've never seen that, though, to tell you the truth. That's pretty interesting. And the pipes they smoked out of, uh, they would clog a lot, so they would snap the tip off, and then they would keep smoking, and then snap the tip off, and then snap it. So the cigarette butts of the 1800s are these little pieces of pipe all over the ground. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the most common artifacts to find. Oh, wow. And you had a, uh, what do you call it, a blacksmith? Yes. Could he make a file like this? I think they would be able to. Wow. Uh, I'm that's... not sure. Some stuff was fabri uh, fabricated in Europe and then brought here. Okay. And then they had uh, ore and steel that they could shape and mold. I don't know if they could create a file, um, but they did make, you know, hooks. Things like that, yeah. Things like that. Sure. So I don't even know if they were making the traps here, if the traps were sent from Europe, too. Um, hmm. But they did have blacksmiths, so... Um, depending how busy they were, um, they could. Yeah, do. right. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a conversion chart just showing you how valuable one beaver pelt is. So you could feed a village with one beaver pelt. Two hundred pounds of sturgeon. Wow. So <laughs> beaver pelt here was as valuable as when we were down at the Lewis and Clark area where the sea otter was. Yeah, sea otter on the coast definitely yeah. saw after very thick, amazing. Yeah. Pelt. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the beaver for all the, the hats, you know, so the yeah. beaver was sought after for hats. Yeah. Thanks for opening it. I'm so glad yeah. you opened that up for us. <laughs> it was a lot. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah. I've been looking at the map trying to figure out why is this called the trading shop. He was interesting. Yeah. See, that to me, it's a, the heart of the whole fort right there, you know? Right. It was like the Lewis and Clark. I really enjoyed it because there were rangers that really explained the different aspects, you know. Yeah, I bet we just timed. He probably came in to work at 10 o'clock, yep. you know. He, they said there's going to be a blacksmith person probably coming in. Yeah, those are hand hammered. We don't know if they're that old or not, but. Hey, here's a view of the fort. So. so the white building's a counting house? Yep. Carpenter? Yeah. Uh, we couldn't see the jail from over there. <laughs> kind of like church seats. <laughs> like the old church seats. Oh well, yeah, like a, a bench. It was a bench. If you were a bad boy or a girl, this is where you were put. This was a really neat place to stop this old fort. To me, the heart of the fort was the uh, trading post where uh, they showed all the trade goods um, that you could, the Indians could trade for and people, settlers could trade for to uh, get with their pelts. When so we passed the guy that was all dressed up, he was a volunteer. He was all dressed up in the, the wares that they would wear Back he, in the day. And yeah. back in the day, and he was heading to the county 
We think the post. county does, yeah. And Is I'm it? sure he was going to give one heck of a... Uh, good demonstration too. too so my suggestion is if you do come to the fort don't come at when it first opens for, the, first of all the gift shop doesn't even open until 10 even though the fort opens at 9 I would come around 11 and let the volunteers get here and get to get set yeah, up or 10 30 you know. so that they get set up so that you get the whole full effect that just always irritates us that it's like the whole parking lot is open there's at least 10 places for them to park. And there's other shaded spots. But no, no, let's park in where the RVs only have four places to park. And buses. And buses. Tour buses. Tour buses, as Jim says. I don't know. Does that irritate you guys just a little? What do you think? Yeah, it irritates me. Let, let us know in the comments section. We like those comments. You know, it's kind of fun interacting with people. So... Thank you for any comments that you give us. We really appreciate it. So our fan in the bathroom, our new fan, the Max Air fan, um, has a lot of light that comes in and we can't stick one of those uh, reflective pillows at the inside of it because it's, this is round. Most pillows are square and it hangs this down anyway. So what we're gonna do is cut a piece of reflectix here to uh, fit over just this portion of it which a little light comes in that. So I've taken a what do you call these things? Uh, Magic marker. Well, it's a, uh, white, it's a marker. white marker. Yeah, sorry. It's a dry erase marker is what it's called. We were going to use a real marker, but then we decided, a permanent marker, that we're going to get it on the Magic Fan thing that's white. And we were afraid it wouldn't come off, and then that would look really stupid with a black streak on our white thing, or oh. a red streak, because those are our two colors. Making a circle with it. Which you did, and now I can clean it off. So I can clean that off. And now Jim's gonna cut. cut. This out. And what we're gonna plan on doing is using some uh, magnets to hold it on. We're gonna try this. Let's see and if it I'll works. I'll show you what I'm gonna plan to. So the next step is to cut it out. I, you know, made the circle here. The next step is to cut it out, and I'm leaving a little um, place here for the magnets uh, where it. Uh, attaches here. So each of these four spots will have a uh, magnet. I'll show you what I mean. Yep. So do you want to cut it while I run out and get the, uh, got the truck outside? Want to run outside and get the pin? No, I failed cutting in kindergarten. You failed cutting? <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe they gave me a left-handed scissors. That perk is completed. Now what I'm gonna Jim do, gets an A in cutting. We have magnets. I'm going to put it on each of the corners of the circle. You understand what I mean by corners? Um, and then magnetic. And these are rare earth magnets we got from uh, Harbor Freight. So these rare earth magnets and I think I'm just going to glue each of these four corners and hope that they're strong enough to hold these, hold this up. Right. So the width. So Jim is using his favorite glue. We use this crap for everything. It is E6000. E6000. We use it for everything in this camper. We okay. have lapel pins on a cork board that we have had up there since we bought the trailer three years. And I haven't had to re-glue any of them. That stuff sticks. Magnet in there too? Yeah. With the fan running? Should you shut the fan off? No, they're going on these things here. Okay, See you're these? not going to stick your finger in it because that's a brand one. No. Okay, so those little... Tabs. You're putting that 6,000 glue on them? Yeah. So you're going to have double magnets. But it's going to go through the... Um, stuff. Yeah, because those are plastic. You would have to put a magnet on those. So I need to put this back up. That one's good. Magnet experiment failed completely. The uh, sometimes this glue just doesn't hold just like a slick surface. I would have had to maybe sand those off a little bit to make them rough. I'm not going to do that. 
So we're going to try this time some Velcro sticky dots on each of these uh, supports and on the back side of our piece of Reflectix and try to, anyway here, get them stuck on. You can see in there? Yeah. Mount St. Helens Visitor Center. Um, their website says they're closed. Their signage says they're closed. When you come up to it, it says they're open. They had RV parking and plenty of parking. Just so you know. The bridge also marks the boundary of the blast zone. Warehouser, Wayhauser owned a lot of the land here and they lost three logging camps 22 buses 30 log trucks 39 railroad cars 12 million board feet of logs 650 miles of roads 19 bridges 16 miles of railroad were washed away so they lost a lot of money when this blue warehouser so killed all the trees and basically everything that was in this area. So if an animal happened to be in this area, more than likely it, it died. It died. So now you can see. And we're 14 miles away from the crater. 14 miles away from the crater. Now past the blast zone, if you're looking down on the river to the right as you're coming in to Mount St. Helens on this route, you can see places when you get closer to the bridge where there's still damage on the river so the biggest part of the damage of course was the blast from the from the volcano going off but a, a large portion of the damage was the debris and the sludge and the ash that flowed down the river um, after the blast too just cleaning that up had to be awfully expensive yeah I'm sure it was and it's still a mess you can see you can see spots along the river still where it's still not exactly cleaned up it's just not quite right put it that way and it's been 41 years ago yeah yeah here's a, a view from this uh what's it called the forest forest museum museum something at Mount St. Helens you see the river down there where it would I'm sure it was damage from the blast but you can see there's stuff that's never grown. The Johnson Ridge Observatory is one of the best places to view Mount St. Helens. So what's for supper? I made some broccoli. Broccoli? Yeah. Oh, broccoli oh, salad. Oh yeah, broccoli salad. So, so what's all in the broccoli salad? I took a couple bundles of broccoli, cleaned it all up, raw broccoli, and chopped it all up, chopped up a small red onion, and fried the bacon all before we ever left so like a week or so ago and then i froze it and then when i get where i'm camping and i want to have a salad i already have all that done so then when i get here i put in three quarters of a cup of craisins pull that out it's already thawed i thawed it yesterday and then i add some red vinegar two tablespoons and then I put about a half a cup of sweetener Miracle in it. No, oh, sweetener. sweetener. And then a cup of Miracle Whip. Oh, a cup of Miracle Whip. And then you, you mix it. So, and with some salt. What flavor. kind of cheese goes in there? Well, you can put, if you want to, you can put in um, cheddar cheese, which okay. I didn't put in yet. So, I got to. And hey, don't you make ours uh, like a low carb? Yeah, because I use it as a low carb. Ours. So use what kind of sweetener then? I used um, that Snowball like stuff. What's that called? Stevia. Stevia? Stevia, yeah. Okay. So I needed to ask me. So granular Stevia, the, the, not the liquid stuff, just the granular. Yeah, okay. Granular. And then I also have uh, pork chops. 
Grand pork chops tonight? Yep, they're on the grill cooking. Then I'll go in the salad. Thanks for watching our video. Please give us a thumbs up if you haven't already. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And keep the comments coming. We do enjoy them. Thanks for watching.